Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you are new to my channel, welcome. Today I'm going to be discussing my pre-op and the first few hours after surgery. I have notes here on my phone because it has been a whirlwind of a past week and obviously I've been on pain meds so I'm a little like groggy, I'm a little tired, I just woke up from a two hour nap. Um, so I want to make sure that I have like bullet points here that I can follow. Before I move on, before I get to the rest of this video, I want to make sure that I say this correct. This is what I had done. I had my uterus and fallopian tubes removed with a robotic laparoscopic hysterectomy and cystoscopy. So essentially, like that just said, I had my uterus and fallopian tubes removed and while he was in there, he checked up in my bladder to make sure that everything was good there. So as I mentioned, this video is going to be just pre-op, what you can expect, what I went through, and then I'm going to follow it up with like the first few hours, the first day after surgery. And then the next video that I am going to upload is going to be the whole week following. So for pre-op, the first thing I did was I drove to see my doctor. My doctor is two hours out of town and his office is right next to the hospital where I was going to be having the procedure. So I sat down with my doctor and me and my husband discussed anything and everything, any concerns, any fears, um, care afterwards, what to expect, what can we like what can we do, what can't we do, anything that would have to do with like what I felt going into the surgery and what we could expect outside of the surgery. And the doctor stressed at that meeting, I just want you to be clear, this means that you cannot have children. You cannot carry children. You could still have children because you have your ovaries, but you cannot carry a child. And I think they kept stressing that so much because we are so young, I am 28 years old. Um, but because I have two children, I have a boy and a girl, I think they figure at that point, like, she's good, she has children, but they want to make it very clear to you while your husband is there that there will be no more caring of children. After I had that meeting with him, I shot on over to the hospital where I had my pre-op over there. So when you get to the hospital, I had to register, I had to take a urine sample, like a pregnancy test. I had to get blood work done. They put a band on my wrist that I was not allowed to remove. So that was a whole thing in itself. I went uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I went four days walking around with a hospital band on my wrist because they said you could not take it off until after surgery. So I walked around town and of course people were asking me, oh, were you in the hospital? What's wrong? And that was kind of uncomfortable and awkward, but that's how that hospital works. Um, they did all sorts of blood work just to make sure that your levels are good going into surgery and to make sure that they knew my blood type in case anything went wrong and I needed a blood infusion. It was at that appointment that I did the first payment. So I owed so much in my deductible and I had to pay so much just to actually be in the surgery and secure that surgery. I also sat down with a nurse and we discussed any previous history, anything that happened in my life, any surgeries, any medications that I am allergic to, any, I mean anything, anything that I've had done, any problems that I've had, any medication I've taken, that's all there because they want to make sure that going into the surgery, there's nothing that's going to complicate the surgery. Obviously, the anesthesiologist is going to want to know like what, how these things affect your body going into a deep sleep. So I did that and then we were done with pre-op and we were on our way home. So on the day before the surgery, you are put onto a pretty strict diet, um, a pretty strict like routine. So I was put on a routine in which I could have a very large breakfast in the morning and I ended up having carrot cake pancakes because I figured it has carbs, it's like substantial, it's going to keep me full most of the day. That's great, they taste delicious. I've done a blog post I think about those in the past, I don't know, I'll insert a picture. I've talked about them in the past but they are just very filling, very yummy, so I wanted something that was going to make me feel happy that day. And you know, carbs, like things that are substantial really make you feel good because I knew I was going into a tough like next two days. And then I also had a vegan egg substitute scramble. And after that, it is clear liquids the rest of the day. So that means like no Shakeology, no smoothies. It has to be liquids that you can see through. So I basically drank water. I think I might have had celery juice that I made in my juicer and I had coffee and that was it. 
I ended up taking my kids to the park and to go get some treats because I wanted to make sure that, you know, I did have anxiety going into surgery and I wanted to make sure that I spent that time with them one-on-one -on -one before going into all that because they were going to be staying with their, their grandmother. And I just, I felt like I needed that time with them one-on-one, -on -one, away, away from everyone, away from everything, just to kind of like be with them and basically like fuel my soul before I went into a surgery because I think that mindset is so important and I wanted to go into the surgery just feeling calm and relaxed and at peace with everything. So we did that and then I came back home. And this is where the real fun starts. So at three o'clock that afternoon, I had to take my first bottle of magnesium citrate and this was for a bowel prep. I don't know why exactly they have you do it. I guess because they were gonna be looking around in that whole area and moving things. They just wanted to make sure like the body was clear. But I had to take the first bottle of magnesium citrate at three nothing happened. I didn't feel anything happening. We were actually concerned for a moment because on the paper it says that if you do not start having bowel movements, that could indicate a serious issue and you need to be seen immediately. So nothing was happening. We thought that was kind of weird. So we took that opportunity, you know, we fed the kids and then we got them in the car, headed to my in-laws house and dropped the kids off, stayed there for a little while. Still nothing was happening. So we came back home and two hours later, I was required to take the second bottle of magnesium citrate. Hello, today is April 29, Sunday. And today is Tara's first pre-up. Is that what it's called? Getting ready? So she's having surgery tomorrow. She had to drink this medication that makes you poop all day. She only pooped once, so it don't really make sense to me. But uh, yeah, that's where we are. How are you feeling for tomorrow, baby? That's <laughs> okay, so just let me lay here and drink my water, please. Right. So, talk to us. How are you feeling right now? Does your belly hurt? No. This location is Okay, stay tuned. And this is where things got interesting. If you have to do a bowel prep before surgery, I was told, and I'm telling you, do not make any plans. No plans whatsoever. You want to make sure that you are home, you are close to a toilet. Well, second part. Medicine is working. Are you pooping? She's pooping. Score. All right. I basically sat on my couch and watched movies the entire rest of the night. I was getting up to go to the bathroom. I was laying back down, getting back up to go to the bathroom. Just the whole rest of the night, I was up and down, up and down. However, I will say that people were telling me really like gross, just crazy things telling me that you would poop so much that you would begin to poop clear. I did not have that experience. I went to the bathroom maybe 12 times. Um, I had 12 bowel movements and then when my husband, it was probably about 10 30 at night, he asked me, do you want to go to bed? I think we should go to bed, get ready for the surgery in the morning. And I told him, I said, I don't think I'm going to be able to go to bed. Like I feel like I'm going to be up the whole night using the restroom because again, that's what I was told. That was not the case. I got up to from the couch, I came to bed, went to the bathroom once, and then I came back to bed and slept all night long. So I guess it's, it's going to affect everybody differently, but I would just say, make sure you don't make any plans and that you are home for the remainder of the night. And that was that. Went to sleep, woke up the next morning, and was off to surgery. So here we are, we are on our way. I woke up at 5.30 in the morning to leave the house at six o'clock because my the surgery center is about two, two and a half hours away depending on traffic and all those kind of things. And um, I wanted to make sure that I was there early because my anxiety could not deal with leaving at the last minute. So we left at six o'clock, we got there around, it was like 9.15 I think, and um, I checked in. And next thing I know, I'm in the back and they're telling me, you know, you're here just in time, you know, he's in his first surgery. 
The first surgery typically takes about two hours. Next thing I knew, the doctor was sticking his head in to say hi to me, and I'm like, wait a minute, uh, aren't you supposed to be in surgery? And that was that. By 10 o'clock, everything was moving. I was supposed to go into surgery at 11, and everything got pushed up. So it all happened very fast, and I started to have like a little moment of panic. But I also think that having things happen faster than I expected them to happen, I think that kind of calmed me because I didn't have a lot of time to think about it. So, here we are now. We are getting ready for her surgery. Stop. I don't know what she's embarrassed. Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. Mm. Yeah. They put on my gown, they put on compression socks, they put in an IV. They told me they'd be putting one IV before I went upstairs, and then one IV once I was upstairs, and that was for medications and in case I needed a blood transfusion, all that kind of stuff. So everybody came in to talk to me. The nursing team came in, the anesthesia, the doctor, the anesthesia, the anesthesiologist. Um, they all came in to talk to us about the different areas and to discuss our concerns. So, you know, of course, I talked with the nurses about my fear of pain medication not working because my body doesn't react to meds. It takes a lot for me to react. After we spoke with the nurses, we spoke with the anesthesiologist because my biggest fear in life the reason that I am so scared of surgery is because I wanted to discuss with him my fear of feeling everything while I was put under. And he really explained to me the kind of medication they were using and that that happens in certain circumstances and why it happens. And him telling me that, it made me feel a little bit at ease, but I still had like that anxiety because I figured he's telling me exactly what I want to hear just so I can get under, but that was it. I talked to the whole team about things to expect and my concerns and whatnot. And then they basically, by 10.30, they were rolling me upstairs. Now, when I was speaking to the medical team, they told me the different kind of medications that they would be giving me, and they told me that when I got upstairs that they would be giving me medicine to relax. And I have had a minor procedure done before, basically where I they had something cut off of my skin, and when they did that, even something so small, it was this huge production. I was wheeled up to a room in a gown. The doctors were confirming with the nurses in the room what they were doing. Like basically they were all just confirming the plan to make sure that they were doing exactly what needed to be done. So I kind of assumed that would be the same thing for this being a major surgery. But that is not how it played out at all. Um, I was wheeled up and I got to the e the elevator and they told me, okay, now we're going to give you medicine to relax. Stop right here. Let me tell you, that medicine is not medicine to relax. That medicine, as soon as that went into my vein, the last thing I remember is being in that elevator and I was completely knocked out. I don't remember anything after that. Next thing I knew, I woke up in the recovery room and I was very disoriented. I did not know what was going on. I've never been to this. I've never put under I've never been put under anesthesia. So I woke up and I for a brief second like I was confused. I didn't know what happened. Then I realized that I was out of surgery and I was like, "Wow, that felt like it took 5 minutes. Like I don't feel like I've been sleeping all that time." Um I started to feel like out of control. I am not a big drinker. I don't drink a lot of alcohol because I don't like to feel out of control. I don't like feeling like I don't have control of my body or control of my thoughts or I don't know why. I just, I'm a type A personality and I think part of me doesn't want to look stupid, doesn't want to make a fool of myself. So immediately I asked the nurse sitting next to me, that was the first thing I heard was, hey Tara, how are you doing? And I said, where is my husband? <laughs> like, and I don't know why, I think it was just, I felt overwhelmed in that moment and I wanted my husband, I wanted that comfort. So she told me, we will wheel you up to see him in a few minutes, and they did. Like, I felt like from that moment to the time I was up to my husband was maybe two minutes. So that was it. I was now in the recovery, my hospital room. I had my own hospital room, and the next few hours were spent learning about my pain, pain management, kind of like making things move and work. and. I am going to discuss all of that in the next video that is coming up that I will actually upload shortly after I upload 
this one, so be on the lookout for that, where I will talk to you about days one through six, the first week of recovery, and there is a lot, so that might be a long one. But thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye!